everybody. We're back with the author of Too Much and Never Enough, the president's niece, Mary Trump. Now, when you were on Rachel Maddow, uh, you, uh, you revealed that not only did um, Fred Sr. have uh, anti-Semitic tendencies, but you said you had heard the president use the N-word. Are there other groups of people that uh, your grandfather and your uncle have uh, shown prejudice toward? I mean, like old-fashioned kind of European prejudices, like Italians no need to pro apply, or yeah. the, uh, the, the, the Irish. Like, are there other groups that have just been you know, singled out? We know what he said about Mexicans. We know what he said about African countries. Is, it, is, it, is this pervasive with everybody who isn't a Trump? Yeah, you know, when uh, I think in the, the late 50s, or early 60s, when the first Italian American family moved into the neighborhood, my grandfather was absolutely incensed by that. Uh, so, you know, we have to remember that although Queens right now is one of the most diverse places on the planet, it was not at all diverse back in the 70s, or sorry, 40s and 50s. So um, my grandfather, starting with my grandfather and going on down, always had problems with difference and always believed in, you know, the superiority, if you will, of, you know, white people who believed the way he believed. Now, there's a report uh, from when your grandfather was a, a young man um, that a Fred Trump had been arrested at a Klan rally mm -hmm. in New York. And uh, it has been, there's been pushback going, well, we don't know if that's the Fred Trump. Do you know, does your family know if that was Fred Trump at that Klan rally? No, the, I never heard that story uh, before. Um, I mean, it, the, the sentiments, uh, it doesn't surprise me that he would agree with the sentiments. It, would, it did surprise me that he would spend the time to go <laughs> to something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, take time away from work. But, um, you know, the, the fact that he would um, believe similar things, that, that does not surprise me. You say that Fred Sr. was a high-functioning sociopath. Do you believe that the President of the United States has sociopathic tendencies? And if so, is it high-functioning? Donald has so many pathologies, um, and they're so complex, there's so much comorbidity that it's really difficult to tease out exactly what's going on with, you know, without testing and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So um, clearly he's comfortable doing heartless things. Clearly he doesn't seem to be interested in empathy. Uh, so I think it's safe to say, yeah, sure, he demonstrates sociopathic tendencies and I think it's equally safe to say that he is not high functioning at all. And that's something that should give every person in this country pause. I mean, we're talking about a man who I do not believe could function in the real world on his own. And the only reason he's gotten as far as he has, well, not sorry, not the only reason, but a crucial reason that he's gotten as far as he has is because he's continually protected by what I consider institutions. You know, he's had all of his needs taken care of. He's never, as we said, been held accountable. He's been protected from his failures and been allowed to fail upward spectacularly. We have to take another break. When we come back, I'll ask Mary about her uncle's uh, cognitive test and why you might give him one. Stick around.